Welcome back friends to our YouTube channel. We really are excited about today's video, The Dead Sea in Israel, and the history behind that and the Jordan River. So uh, as you all know, we've traveled five, six countries, been in Kenya with our daughter and husband Sylvia and Corey, the Chunga, for five weeks. That was a, an awesome experience. We got back, we've been back for about a month and a half. So we still have more videos of Israel and Switzerland and different countries, Germany. And so they're coming up and we're working on those. And my wife is also working on some uh, recipe videos. She likes to do food and recipes and cooking classes, maybe, coming up. But today's video is about the Dead Sea and the Jordan River. The Jordan River in Israel is on the north side of a little town called Mount Hermon. It flows down south about uh, into the Sea of Galilee about probably a total of 200 miles, over 200 miles to the Dead Sea. But the elevation I find interesting in Mount Hermon is over 9,000 feet. About two miles high. So that elevation, and as it runs south into the Sea of Galilee, at the widest point, it's 15 miles wide and 50 to 200 feet deep. This is the Jordan River where John the Baptist baptized Jesus. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, history in the New Testament in the Old Testament about the Jordan River. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. But we're looking now at as it flows through the Sea of Galilee, and as it crosses down into the Dead Sea, it's emptying water, and it's hitting a low, low point of its uh, elevation. As it empties into the Dead Sea, it's dumping about 30 cubic feet of water into the Dead Sea. And I guess what I found interesting is, and you'll see our videos of that, but how it travels over 200 feet in the country of Israel, three different countries surrounding that. And it, uh, it's dumping that much water into it and it doesn't go out, it, it evaporates in the Dead Sea. The Jordan River is one of the lowest elevation rivers in the world and we've seen that going into the Dead Sea so it just kind of like, it kind of like empties, it empties into the Dead Sea and it evaporates. There's so much salt in there that, you know, scientists believe in 50 years from now, it'll be so salty that it won't even be able to pass through the soils because the salt's going to be that thick. But it's been there for 2,000 years, and it's still there. And there's a lot less water running through it because of back in 1994, they signed a peace treaty with other countries. So other countries are using that water, that 200 miles of water flowing down, they're using that, therefore, not near the water amounts going into the Dead Sea. Back in the day, there was 1.3 billion cubic meters of water flowing into the Dead Sea. I believe research is in 2000, as of 2010, there's only 20 to 30 million gallons going into the Dead Sea. That's because 
of these other countries that are using that water for their benefit. The amount of water that's flowing in there, a, a cubic meter is a thousand liters. Those of us in America that understand gallons, I, I did the math on that. A thousand liters equals 264 gallons. So if you take 264 gallons times 30 million, there's still a lot of water flowing into the Dead Sea that's evaporizing into the air. And with the salt water, it has got some healing elements that you'll see in our video that people use for health benefits. So I just found it very, very interesting. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you like this video. Subscribe to it and hit the ring bell, jump up and down, clap your hands and just be happy. Thank you for following us today on this on this whole Dead Sea experience to know that we could be in the lowest place on earth below sea level. 100 degrees, hot weather, but a beautiful experience.
this is the Dead Sea, the lowest place on the earth. The Dead Sea in Israel. I'm gonna have to touch it from here. Some people are gonna swim. Some people are just gonna touch it. I'm gonna be one of those that just touches it. You see that? Dead Sea. Ten times more salty than the Mediterranean. Yes, here we are heading back up the hill. It was quite a downgrade to come on down to the Dead Sea. And we are just trudging back up the gravel pathway here and just looking at everything. Just can't believe we're here at this place. Wow. Anyway, we, were, we are trying to go back up and find our pathway there as we pass by these nice resting places and turn around see the sea once more on the other side there's little shade shelters and pergolas to sit under take a rest we definitely had to rest on the way up it was quite a drudgery to walk all the way up there in the hot sun it was a really 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 warm day but it was so nice to see this and we exited through this beautiful greenery that was planted at the entrance of this place of beautiful palm trees and the orange blossoming trees. I'm not sure what they're called, but they were very beautiful and refreshing to see as we exited that place. And as we just took a tour of all the nice watered greenery, we knew it was watered because everything else was barren in this land, it seemed like. Here someone had a nice snack of coconut milk, the way it looks. And green shrubbery, very nice and green. Anyway, this is what we had to show you from the exit and entryway of this place. Okay, here we are. Just left the parking lot and now we are beside a deeper, cleaner Jordan River further north towards the Sea of Galilee. It was just amazing to walk in there again and feel that quiet hush of the Holy Spirit. It seems like this river was especially created in such a way to create about three or four different baptizing sites with little rooms of stone walls and stairways going down to the water and shallow but deep enough to be totally immersed in baptism. Beautiful flowers, nice water, clean water, and places to sit. And we were so inspired. Our group gathered in the farthest place that you saw right here under the little awning roof thing in the farthest side here we were witnessing this baptism going on and we just had to sing so our group was singing and praising the lord worshiping with these people the 
was such a blessing to see all of these young people in this group and how they were just bathing in the presence of the Lord, enjoying a lifelong commitment that they made for the Lord to serve Him and follow Him. And they were all so excited. It just put excitement in the air. You could feel it. I found this wall very interesting there along the Jordan River in uh, Mark 1, in verse 9. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, was baptized by John. Also notice that the English version here and then the German, the one right here is what we used to 
read out of in the Bible when we were still Amish. And as all the uh, different countries and their different languages had this wall mural up all across a wide area of the Jordan River, as people were getting baptized, different countries could come and see their flag, could come and see their their own language, and they could study that. And I thought it was just very intriguing, very interesting, and thought you would really enjoy the different missions, the different countries, and all in God's Word. Very inspired by this kind of work that they did there along the river. Here you can see in this parking lot how huge it is, big, large. Um, it is ready for many tour buses and during the peak tourist season, they have many, many people and buses there and they are prepared for it. But we wanted you just to see the barrenness of this land. This is the security building and this is the patio where people line up in lines when there's many people here and they wait their turn to see the Jordan. We went and got our feet wet, although I don't have a video of that. We did do that along with all the others. You know, it depends on the level of the water. If you go to the north, it's more water. Yeah. The other side Jordan, is that right? Yeah, we can see the Jordanian flag. That's what I thought. All the churches in front of us. Et sous Josué, et sous Josué, et les douze, et les douze. 
sacrificateurs, sacrificateurs. portons l'arche, les os se sont taris, les os se sont taris, et ils ont traversé, et ils ont traversé. L'eau tu représentes, l'eau tu, tu représentes toutes les difficultés, toutes les difficultés, les problèmes, les problèmes, les combats, les combats, les That's about 350 kilometers. And all the time, the west side of the river is Israel, and the right hand side of the river is Jordan. Now, when we go to the north, the river will be bigger and more water. But halfway between here and the Sea of Galilee, the water has been diverted to different farms. That's why it reached here so small. Yeah, it seemed like it would have been baptism, it would have been much wider. Probably. In, in Jesus' time, it's more water. And in six days' war time, it was more water. My wife was two years old when her parents fled, fled from Jerusalem because of the war and they crossed the Jordan. And they had to cross the Jordan River. And they could not just walk it. They had to be taken by a small boat. I, how about when um, they cross, the children of Israel cross over... Same thing, it was a bigger river. When they came from Mount Nebo, or from the mountains of <coughs> Moab and Gilead, led by Joshua yes. to Jericho, they also had a big river. At that. Where did that take place? At Jordan River and maybe close to Jericho, close to where we are here, but we don't know which spot exactly. Because like we are Gilgal? All... Sorry? Not at Gilgal? Yeah, but it's, it's uh, Gilgal is not known. Oh, where, okay. Where? We don't know where it is. Well, it's going by, they sent the spies over to Jericho. That was the first place that they took. Jericho so is the first place. Close. Exactly. So it will be somewhere here, but we've we don't come know. north a little bit from Jericho. Now we no, now we are south of Jericho, or east of Jericho, okay. and soon when we go back to the bus, it will drive north of Jericho. So it could have been pretty close. Yeah, yeah, but we, there is no exact spot okay. that we here. Yeah. But Jericho is yes, it's, it's yeah. north. It's north. We saw already the walls next to Elijah. Why is it so dirty? It's not dirty. It's muddy. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's water that, because it's shallow sea, shallow water, that's why. That's why if you go to the north, you will see it more clear, more green. That's why Naaman didn't want to get there. Yeah, he would go to Syria. I see the flag. The yeah, flag that, that's the Jordan. That's, that's Jordan, yes. The Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. This is on the Israel side. We are on the Israeli part, or Palestinian, or whatever you want to call it. And there is the Jordanian part. So we are only a few meters away. That's the closest you could get to the to the uh, to that uh, 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 neighboring country. Oh. Actually, they were in war until 1980s, when the first Arab Israeli peace agreement was signed with the Jordanians that we were able to be to come to this particular place as it was uh, in the no man's land. It was in a land where, uh, I mean, people will, uh, are not allowed to come uh, to the front mm. and in order to be so close to the border of each other, only until the peace treaty was signed, then both, both nations could, could travel between the two countries through a certain kind of arrangements, like a visa, uh, etc. But from this side, uh, you can only see the, see the people on the other side. You cannot cross over here. You so there's go. even a fence right on the river. Th this, is, this is what you have. There's a fence. This is what you have. Just that fence there. There is a fence over there, but that's all. Uh, it's there between the two borders okay. on this side of the river. Like on the other side of the of the border, there are electric uh -huh. wires, and there is uh, uh, two uh, main entrances to Jordan. One is through the border, uh, one we call through the Alambe Bridge, and the only way to cross between the two countries was through the Alambe Bridge. Mm -hmm. So from Israel side, they call it the Alambe Bridge, while as from the Jordanian side, 
they call it the King Hussein Bridge, <laughs> okay. which is the same one. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. that. One of our guides that has been here for many years, lived here, was raised here. And we have the Jordan River and the Jordan flag flying on that side. And then we are on the Israel side here with the Israeli police up here guarding this side. So it is just an awesome experience to see all these people and they're happy to be with the Lord and some of them are getting re-baptized. So it's just a, a, a special Holy Spirit moment to be in this place where many people don't experience this the way that we were able to. So we thank God that we were able to do that. coming to help the Palestinian authorities by building them 
compound and train them to be good soldiers, to be good policemen. And that's one of the U.S. projects that they built for the Palestinian in Jericho City. It's a training camp. You've heard of General Dayton, 1995, the one who, who was uh, having a good um, experience in Kosovo, stopping the war there, he wanted to do the same thing here between the Palestinians and between the Israelis by training Palestinians who can protect the peace, you know. So that's one of their, the Dayton project. Can you explain the elevation of where we were? Uh, yesterday we were at the lowest spot. The Dead Sea surface is 400 meter below sea level. Jericho is 350 meters, so oh, it's nice. a little bit higher. And now, the more we go to the north, the high we will be. So, the, it will be less until we reach the Sea of Galilee, which is 200 meter. So, there is 150 meters difference between Jericho and Sea of Galilee. So we're going slowly, slowly up, but we'll still be below the sea level. So if you look uh, to the left hand side, you can see mountains. This is still the Judean mountains, but the far mountains, the high far mountains, that's the best, the, the, the West Bank mountains. And this is part of Samaria. Samaria? Judea and Samaria. Judea is Jerusalem mountains. Samaria is Shechem. You know Shechem? Shechem is Nablus of today, which is in the old biblical time known as the town of Shechem, which was very famous at the time of Solomon, David, and it was part of Israel at the time of David. When we talked about uh, the mountains, Judean mountains extend to Jerusalem, and north of Jerusalem it will be uh, it will be the mountains of Samaria, then the mountains of Carmel, then the mountains of the Galilee. We will be seeing all these. Wow! I'm just assuming it. Very interesting. Thank you.